Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Birmingham and to the 2024 version of SEC Basketball Media Days. We got our men's basketball coaches throughout the day today. Pretty cool to begin the season seeing the AP poll with nine of the top 25 from the SEC. That's a long way from where we were in 2016. We had three teams in the NCAA tournament that year. I know that we're in October. March is a long way away, but that kind of respect for our league has been a long time coming. I'm gonna take some time to introduce each of our coaches. First is Lamont Paris from the University of South Carolina. Lamont's a graduate of the University of Worcester, Division III school in Ohio. And today's fascinating fact is he majored in business economics, wrote a senior thesis entitled, Taxation of Sin. Wait for the colon here, the effects of ex excise taxes on the demand function of cigarettes, and then there's more, but we'll go there. Uh, obviously from that, it maybe not had, uh, his, his thesis didn't indicate a plan at that time to go into coaching, but his coach at Worcester, Steve Moore, saw something in him and convinced him to participate on his staff as a coach and to make it work. Lamont spent time working in Worcester's admissions office. And if you ever worked in small college admissions, you know what pressure is. Fast forward to where we are now. He was our 2024 Coach of the Year, led his team to the NCAA tournament, and he was invited back last year to Worcester as the keynote speaker, the commencement speaker at the school's graduation ceremony. And we were comparing notes about quarter zips. I, I favor quarter zips myself, although I'm in a sport coat today. He actually has a quarter zip on, and the respect this quarter zip dedication has earned has produced a quarter zip Twitter account in recognition. So with that, I welcome to the stage University of South Carolina head men's basketball coach, Lamont Paris. All right, um, thanks for the kind introduction. I appreciate it. Uh, glad to be back here. One of the most nervous moments of my career probably was uh, speaking at a, at a uh, graduation commencement speech. It's just like you speak at a lot of things, but that's the one that you feel like if you mess it up, you're gonna someone's life is going to be ruined. So, uh, but I made it through that. And uh, glad to be back here. The weather's cooling down and uh, that always means the start of basketball season. So really excited to be back, uh, to be back again uh, amongst great coaches, uh, some unbelievable teams, and uh, really excited for this group to continue to gel and uh, get ready to see where they where they lead us. It's a, it's a great opportunity. It's really fun for me. I enjoy doing this. Uh, groups are probably now more than ever. You got more turnover and, and, and more new faces on your roster. And so, uh, again, just trying to see where these guys take us is, a, is an exciting adventure for me personally. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, to uh, getting going. But we had a really good summer, a lot of new faces. At the same time, some familiar faces. Uh, that's always good. Good amount of experience, uh, not only at the Division I level, but a good amount of experience within our program, which I also think is important. So um, that's the basic stuff. I'll open it up for questions. Sure. All right, let's uh, uh, raise your hand if you have a question, and then we'll get one of the remote mics to you. Uh, and if you would, when you uh, ask your question, if you would uh, state your name and the media outlet that you represent. So let's start right now in the front row. Oh, good morning, Coach. Good morning. Is this working? Okay. Yeah, AP Stedham, AP and Kelly as we see it. How are uh, we doing? Good, Coach. Good. Glad to be here. Coach, what is the role for Nick Pringle transferring over from Alabama? Uh, it'll be a very significant role uh, for Nick. Um, he's a... Uh, experienced guy, he's from the state of South Carolina, so we were thrilled to have him come back. He's been experienced um, not only in college basketball, but in he's well versed in SEC basketball. Um, he's got not only NCAA tournament experience, but he's played in the Final Four. Um, and all those things will serve him well, but, uh, but his role will be one of, uh, of leadership 
Um, you know, we'll have really high expectations for what his role will be as a basketball player. Um, the one good thing about that I, I think about, there are a lot of moving pieces and, and guys transferring from one school to the next. And I think one way to look at it is that you can provide opportunities for guys, different roles, different opportunities. And so Nick will have a role for us that, that he probably has never had in his college ex career. And so that's exciting to help provide that for him. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see how uh, how he adjusts to that role. And uh, my anticipation is that he'll do a tremendous job with that. But, uh, but we're going to count on Nick for a lot of things on both sides of the ball. Defensively, he's a high energy guy. He's a, a, a tremendous athlete. I don't think any, he's ever really been asked to score. Um, but we're really interested in exploring that and seeing that, what that looks like for him. And, uh, but he's got a great infectious personality, a lot of energy, and, and uh, really looking forward to, uh, to seeing what he does this year. Hey, raise your hand if you have a question. This comes to the right side on the front. Uh, ben Roberts, Lexington Herald Leader. Uh, what is it that makes uh, Colin such a special player, and where do you see he can make some realistic jumps here in year two for you guys? Um, yeah, Colin, Colin does a lot of good things. I think the, the strengths that really tend to set him apart. He's got a tremendous feel for the game of basketball. Um, he's incredibly unselfish, probably, probably too unselfish. Um, but he's incredibly unselfish. Uh, he, he values playing defense at a high level. He takes a lot of pride in, in doing that. Um, but I think the things that really make him different are he's got an incredible feel, um, incredible touch and just a knack for putting the ball in the basket, um, even in some non-conventional ways. And you can, you can get him in a, in a short roll situation, and, and he can make a play or um, attack the rim or, or pass. He's a really good passer. I think those are the things that we saw in him when we first uh, recruited him that, that led us to believe that he had a chance to be a really good player. Um, in terms of growth, I think there are a couple of different areas. I think. He has such good natural touch. At one point, I do believe he'll be able to shoot the ball um, from with range. Um, w only time will tell when that happens. Uh, so I think that's an area that he can that he can grow. Um, and then I think the other one is just is just playing a different role. Um, he's the type of guy that can get double figures in any particular game. Um, but we're going to need him to generate offense for us. And, and I think there's a distinction that's made there that's significant because it's one thing just to go out there and in 30 minutes find your way into, into 14, 15, 16 points. And then there's another, another thing completely to say the offense is, is you're generating offense not only for yourself but for others and making decisions and and uh, you're the focal point of other teams. And so I think that's another area of growth just for him to be able to not just get stuff to happen for him, but to intentionally create things for other guys on his team. Next question on the back row on the left. John Whittle with the bigspur.com. Uh, last year you stood here, your team was picked last in the league, but you, you knew or you thought you knew what you had. Um, fast forward to this point this year, does anything that's happened in the last year kind of validate um, what you feel like you are as a head coach and, and you know, how, how uh, things played out for y'all last year? Um, yeah, I wondered how many questions it was going to take before somebody referenced last year. And, while I thought about channeling my inner J.J. Redick uh, in his opening press conference, I decided, I decided not to do that. But um, you, know, you know how I feel about, about rankings. And honestly, <clears throat> I think it's a favor to be put in a position where you have to prove yourself. And uh, I think we all have to prove ourselves. Um, and when you get a ranking, that's, that's not as high as what guys think. Uh, it sets the stage for constant validation and approval uh, of, amongst your peers, amongst the media, amongst uh, 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 the selection committee. So I think for them, um, there's nothing that could be better than for us to be ranked in a way that they perceive as, as disrespectful. Um, 
But, you know, we have to prove ourselves. So why should we be ranked any, any different? I knew uh, the rankings are, I, don't, I didn't do as, many, as much research. I don't have the same stats that I did last year. Uh, but fortunately, I think it's a generally accepted if the last place team finishes first that you don't get to pick anymore. So luckily we didn't finish first for those guys. Um, but as far as my own validation, I, I, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, you know, maybe particularly down here in the southeast, my name's not sexy. Um, but I went to the College of Worcester. Uh, people don't know how to pronounce the name of the university. Uh, so it's just, uh, I am who I am. I'm very comfortable with who I am. Uh, that kind of was our mantra last year. There was a couple of things. One was earn it. They, they, they made that up themselves in the preseason that they wanted to earn it. I feel like they did. Um, uh, but the other thing that they always said, I didn't tell them, was we are who we are. We do what we do. And uh, that's not going to change. I am who I am. Uh, I like the guys that I like. And we develop guys the way that we do. And uh, hopefully we rely on the fact that, I mean, there's probably a couple teams that, that wish we didn't have to play the games based on where they're picked. We rely on the fact that we get to play the games to show that maybe the picks just aren't that accurate. But uh, we're looking forward to getting a chance to, to, to try to prove that. Next question, uh, second row on the left. <clears throat> Alan Cole, GamecockScoop.com. Uh, defense was so much a part of this team last year and kind of the buy-in you got from everybody. You know, you lost a lot of players off last year. Do you feel like this year's group has the same kind of buy-in to those principles and those rules from what you've seen so far? So far, I mean, we ended up being a really good and efficient and effective defensive team last year. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to predict. I, I think from a physical standpoint, potentially, there's more. We have more length. Um, we have more athleticism overall, but uh, but how that comes together um, in terms of learning and committing uh, to rules, a complete de devotion to basic principles defensively, um, we'll have to see as a, as as the season goes. Uh, the potential for us to be really good defensively is there again, but, uh, but we're not there. So we start, honestly, the first thing I would just look at would be how the summer went and how our guys interacted with one another. And I think that's probably where the biggest similarities between this year's team and last year's team are, is that we just have a group of guys that, uh, that respect one another at the highest level. Um, they enjoy being around one another and uh, uh, you know we have workouts and 30 minutes after the workouts done in the summer they were sitting around and talking about what was going on in the Olympics and uh, or whatever it is we don't tell them to do that they just do that they like one another um, and uh, I think that always uh, helps in your plight to be a good team and uh, defensively you have to make some sacrifices uh, uh, and this is the type of group, the makeup of it anyway, would lend itself to believe that we have a chance to, to do some good things defensively. Next question on third row on the right side, and then we'll come to you on the left. Hey, Coach. I'm Brad Harvey from College Sportscast. Brad. Uh, the SEC is very talented and tough, and their expectations are that the makeup – of the SEC is going to be a challenging conference. How do you see this team for you guys kind of fitting into the toughness of the SEC? Well, as Commissioner Sankey mentioned, this league continues to get better every year. I think back to um, Rick Barnes made a statement that this was last year's season was the best he had ever seen the SEC, and he can't imagine it being any better. Um, Fast forward a year later, it might be better. So, uh, and it's and it's full of tough-minded and tough physic physically tough teams, but tough-minded teams, um, which I think is just as much, uh, just as important or more important. And so, that's kind of who we've been. That's who that's who I am. I, I, I just their challenges. Um, I want we want 
to be in front of challenges and then overcome obstacles and hurdles and, and make achievements in the face of challenges. I don't think we want to, I don't think there's near the gratification of making achievements uh, without adversity, without challenge. And so that's what we want. I think everybody wants that. Um, and it, certainly that will be provided in this conference with the great coaches, uh, the great traditions, and, uh, and the number of good players that are in this league. But uh, our toughness, uh, we had a high level of toughness last year. Again, it's a process to try to get to that, but, but we have the makings of what could be another good, tough team. If you're not tough in this conference, I just, it's going to be, it's going to be hard to win any games, to be honest with you. Okay, next question on the end, on the second row, and then we'll come down to the front row. Richmond Weaver, Fox Sports Upstate in Greenville, South Carolina. And now the definition of offseason probably changed over the years, but it is a time where players can improve but how do you, as a coach, utilize the offseason to improve as a coach? Um, that's a good question. You know, times have changed. The, 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 the amount of time that you have as a coach to do anything that's not directly related to the team that you have right now is getting smaller and smaller. And that's whether it's spending time with your family, um, playing a little golf, um, uh, uh, talking to the other coaches. That's one thing I think that unfortunately doesn't happen as much. You used to be able to spend more time and go see coaches and sit down and, and talk more about basketball. And it's, it's getting more and more difficult to do that. Um, but I did try to make a commitment to do that this summer. Um, and in the off season, just, just talking with as many coaches as I can. And, and uh, we, we did some things that worked last year that we had success with but still bouncing that off of other coaches, some things, and trying to learn. Um, you know, I, was, I just got back from uh, uh, Bo Ryan, who I worked for for, uh, I was seven years in Madison. The majority of that time was with him, was inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame. And so I just got back, but while I was up there, I, I went to uh, uh, the Boston Celtics and watched a little bit of one of their workouts and just constantly trying to learn and, and see where People that are doing it the best, how they, what they, what they value. Um, uh, uh, it just is. I'm consumed by greatness and and learning why people, or individuals, or teams, or groups achieve greatness. And so, just spend some time diving into that a little bit and trying to, trying to uh, improve the mental aspect of it. Okay, we've got time for two more questions. We'll take one here on the front and then on the third row on the right. Uh, uh, hey, hey, Lamont, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat. Morning, Democratic. Bob. Is that morning? It is early for me anyway. Um, hey, uh, Arkansas got, got Jonas Adu from Tennessee. I know. I think you played him twice last year. Just wondering what you thought of him and what kind of player you think Arkansas is getting. Um, well, he's the obvious. He's long, athletic. Um, He's growing as a player. Uh, he's been a fixture in this league. He's obviously uh, a, a valuable asset. Um, I hate to talk about people as assets, but um, he's a valuable asset to any organization at this level. And so, you know, I don't know him as a person, but, I, but, but he seems to be a very competitive uh, guy, appears to be a good teammate. Um, so, I don't know. They're getting a long, athletic, uh, developing, offensive skill guy that uh, is very familiar with this league. Hey, last, last question on the far right, third row. James Fletcher from On3. Uh, just wanted to ask you, in your experience, uh, integrating freshmen and then transfers into your program, what are some of the challenges that come first with the, the freshmen and maybe they haven't learned a system like yours before or haven't heard some of the ter terminology versus bringing in a transfer who maybe you're having to reprogram some of the things that they were doing at past programs? Yeah, the challenges exist for both of those. It's a really good question. We've talked about that. I think, I think, uh, uh, the difference in the young guys and then the older guys that are new to this system, they've been around college basketball. And so I expect that they're, the rate at which they uh, uh, acclimate to new things will be quicker than young guys. Young guys are young guys. Um, and so two distinct challenges. And I, I, I think in terms of 
uh, how much you push with those two different groups is going to be a little bit different. Um, uh, your level of acceptance of, of, of continual mistakes, uh, I think is you have a shorter, uh, a shorter, a smaller tolerance potentially for older guys that have been around that understand. I think they understand stuff uh, a little bit. But so, but yeah, we do. We have some young guys that will end up playing significant minutes for us. And we have some new faces into our program that are older that will play significant minutes for us. Uh, and for us, what we do and how we go about our business is so important that I, I don't want to devalue at all the fact that we have a lot of returning guys. We have a lot of new faces, right? Um, I think probably six of our top nine guys from last year are back. Um, and maybe some would argue that the top three are gone. But that next six guys is, is vital in terms of getting new guys, uh, whether they be young guys or transfers, up to speed in terms of terminology, the, 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 the communication aspect of, of uh, you know, it's one thing for me to show them or teach them something, but when they hear that voice coming from someone who's been in this program, that's won a lot of games, that understands it thoroughly, uh, I just think uh, uh, the carryover is, is so much more important. So. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Thank you, Coach Barris. Thanks, guys. Uh, I think we'll have uh, Georgia and South Carolina players uh, coming in momentarily, and they will be 